Hi everyone, my name is Courtney and I'm Fiber Fox Studios. Welcome to Mosaic Monday and to my Farrah Han shawl introduction video. <laughs> I've actually been working on my very first mosaic crochet triangular shawl since December, to be honest. <laughs> I've been working on this for a long time and it is my very first fully written pattern. There are no pictures in the pattern. It is 14 pages long. It is available over on my Etsy shop for purchase. For those of you who are interested, I will have it linked below, but you do not need the pattern. You do not need it because I do take you through all 87 rows of this shawl and we do the start of the row, get you started on your repeat, meet back up at the center, get you started working down, and then we meet back up at the end of the row to finish out. So I have covered every aspect that you need and you can follow along and work this shawl right there with me with the videos. You do not have to have that pattern. But for those of you who do prefer the written pattern, you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever do another one. And I now know why there aren't a ton of tutorials out there for this type of shawl here on YouTube. I know now, after spending the last three weeks filming, editing, filming, editing, <laughs> filming, editing, filming, and editing. But the end result will hopefully be a series of videos that you really, really enjoy and you're going to end up with something absolutely gorgeous that you get to wear or sell. I mean, it's up to you. Really quickly, I'm going to run through the details of the different size yarns that I've calculated and figured everything out. I actually worked the shawl in three different sizes of yarn, three different hook sizes. So I've made the shawl five times. <laughs> Two of them were prototypes. And then the third version is what I made three of, and that is what I'm releasing as the final version of the shawl. Grab a pen and paper so that we can go through these figures real quick of, you know, sizes, measurements, that sort of thing, how much yarn you'll need. I'm going to run through all of that now. It'll all also be reflected down in the description. But for those of you who are in other countries, they're going to rely on the translations. I'm going to spell it all out in the video so you can read it on your screen. So... Grab your pen and paper and let's get started on each of them and then we will run through individually each shawl as well in this video. Ready? Okay. Now, size one yarn, you can use size one, you can use any yarn that you want. I used a size one yarn to create the shawl. It's a smaller version of it. So size one can be used and that yarn you're going to need 1400 yards total and that's maximum we are going to be using anywhere from a 2.75 millimeter hook to a 3.25 millimeter hook if you're using that larger hook size that is where you're going to need the larger amount of yarn you need 700 yards per color and if you're using the largest size hook different hook than me i used on my specific one I used a 2.75 millimeter hook, so I ended up using just under 600 yards of yarn each color. So it was about 1,200 yards worth of yarn for my sample piece, but you could use up to 1,400 yards. That's why I'm saying 700 per color. Your measurements for the shawl will end up on size one yarn, 57 inches wide at the top edge, and 26.5 inches long in the center. Size three yarn. You are going to be using a hook size 3.75 millimeter to no more than 4.5 millimeter. And you're going to need 900 yards per color. So 1800 yards total. 900 color A, 900 color B. On my actual finished shawl, which I'll just show later in the video, I ended up using only 700 yards of each color. So I used 700B, 700A. And that's because I used a four millimeter hook. So my measurement calculation of yarn is based on you either crocheting looser than me or using a larger hook size than me. So I'm trying to add in the overage to cover all of that especially for those of you who are, you know, ordering yarn. So you don't need to 
panic if you're going to be using from your stash you will if you use a four millimeter you only need 700 yards of each of your colors for size four yarns you are going to be using a hook size of five millimeter to no more than 5.5 millimeter and on that one you're going to need 1200 yards of color a 1200 of b for 2400 yards total now on my actual finished shawl that i'm currently wearing as a cape I should call it my cape version of it <laughs> but on my finished one i used three skeins of craft smart yarn so i used 1062 yards of color a 1062 yards of b so just over 2100 yards is what I actually ended up using. But if you use a larger hook size and all, that's where the 2,400 yards total comes in. So just follow my measurements or my calculations if you're having to order yarn and you should be fine. But again, don't panic. If you are gonna try to use your scraps, you can use your scraps, it'll be fine. This week I'm releasing the introduction, part one and part two, all out onto the channel so that you can begin working and then next week part three will go live and you'll be able to work part three i am very aware of how long it takes to make these shawls so i feel like this is the best way to stagger out those videos plus i don't want to be asked next week what where's my next video after spending three weeks on this <laughs> So I at least like to get two weeks of upload on it. I didn't want to stretch it out because you don't need three weeks, you know, to make the shawl. It doesn't take that long. So I, I didn't want anybody to have to wait for that third video to finish. I do want to point out that you do not have to complete the extension part. So you could skip part three because in size four and in size three yarn, it is that shawl would end still at like basically my waistline. So it's still a substantial size shawl. And if you were to skip the third section and not do the extension, the extension is there because number one, I'm plus size. I like my shawls to be big and cover me, right? And I know that there's a lot of you out there that struggle with that same thing. You want the shawl to cover your whole back, even if you're a small person, like you want a sizable shawl. I want to say this very loud and clear. You can always use any yarn you want. It doesn't matter about the fiber content. It does not matter about the size. You don't want to try to use a lace weight and a size four together in the same project, obviously. Similar size yarns, uh, three and a four can be mixed together. That is perfectly fine. You adjust your hook size. I always give information about that down in my descriptions on the videos. So for those of you who are always wondering what yarn to use, you can use anything. You could even go as far as to use crochet thread if you wanted to, but it would be a beautiful project. I, I don't, you know, doubt that at all, but <laughs> I don't know that crochet thread is the right type of yarn for this because you would end up with a much smaller shawl, but whatever you want to use. For the size one, I'm going to show you the sample and then we're going to talk details. So, this one was not photographing very well, like it just wasn't enough contrast in the photographs yesterday. So I am so excited that it is showing up much better on this video <laughs> in today's lighting. So that is fantastic. This in size one, I have left my tails on because I do want to show y'all the tails and where they're going to be. But size one yarn for this baby. Tails are all going to be on, we'll be working bottom out, just like you typically would for a triangular shawl. But we want to uh, talk about our tails right here. It's included in the part three video, I show you how I bind off all of my ends again. I know some of you are familiar with my bind off, but it is included. And then we clip off these tails and we put on a very simple border. The border on this shawl is just a slip stitch and then a single crochet. So we slip stitch along the, the bottom, what becomes our bottom edge. And we do a single crochet edge here along our top. Just to kind of finish it up. So you can still wear it like a shawl over your shoulders. 
However, you know, I'm plus size, so this is, you know, looks kind of silly on me. <laughs> but obviously, you know, on a regular <laughs> skinny person, this shawl's plenty and it is, you know, beautiful. So now what I was going to do is I was going to wear it with a sweater um, and do it as a scarf. So in size one, even though this is a very large shawl, when you make it in the other sizes of yarn in size one you get a really nice looking um, triangle scarf in my opinion anyway at tassels and style it however you want but you can wear it as a triangle scarf when you do it in the size one yarn so let's talk about hook sizes and yardage requirements for size one for size one yarn, we can use a hook size from 2.75 millimeter, which is what I used, to up to 3.25 millimeter. I think you would be fine in that range. And your yardage, you're going to need 700 yards per color. So you have color A, and then you have color B. You need 700 plus 700, so that's 1,400 total yards for size one. Now that's with the overage in there. So that's as if someone is using the 3.25 millimeter hook. So a larger hook than what I used. I only used about 575 yards of each color. So that in itself, you know, is it is a big difference. You know, we're talking about over 100 yards difference, but I'm just trying to leave that little overage in there in case you just you crochet looser than me you're going to use more yarn you use a different hook size than me you're going to use more yarn and of course some people don't have access to run to the store and just grab more of something and i don't want anyone to not order enough yarn <laughs> so <laughs> so i am trying to cover all those bases in this pattern so that everyone's covered and gets enough yarn so size one measurements 57 inches wide at the top and it is 26 and a half inches long from the center gauge is achieved i achieved four inches by four inches with 19 stitches and 15 rows now the next one we're going to go into is going to be size three yarn and i am going to show you the one that is made in the tutorial with you guys but then i'm going to show you a couple other ones just at the end of the video they're size three yarns but they're just they're the prototypes we'll go over those at the end because they are not the finished and final design but i'm going to show you for color inspiration in the video though i kept it pretty simple i just stayed with blues for my color b and I use that gold tone. It's actually called mustard is the name of the color. I used it in as my color A. So this is my completed finished size three yarn. So DK lightweight yarn, size three. And we're backing up, backing up, backing up. And I'm gonna lean. <laughs> do you see it? <laughs> I hope you do. <laughs> All right, so size three, our measurement of size three. So the total size of this shawl is 68 inches at the straight edge. So along this edge, and we are 36 inches long at the center. So that is what you should expect out of this one, 68 inches. I'm gonna take off this and show this draped so ta-da but hopefully you can see I'll back up some more this way my dog I don't want her to move she's on the other side so as you can see still goes down this is still a very nice size shawl for plus size but it's not too thick and it's not real heavy now obviously big weight difference between these one I was wearing at the beginning of the video the size four yarn one it is a lot heavier it's not too heavy not to me anyway but it is a lot heavier denser it's very very warm this one is still very nice now let's talk about it i'm gonna 
do the same thing, scarf version. Now this is a scarf, it is way bigger. <laughs> this is why I did it in size one. <laughs> because this is actually my preferred method of the way that I, my preferred method, my preferred styling is to wear my triangular shawls as scarves. And this is like so big and bulky, it's ridiculous looking. So fashion wise, it's a fail as a, like as a scarf, but warmth wise, it's a win because I'm already sweating. <laughs> so it is very, very, very nice. It's long, it does go down for me. That's my belly button down there. So, I mean, lengthwise, when you have it all wrapped up like this and bunched up, it's down to your belly button. I mean, maybe it, you could spend more time styling it and stuff and it wouldn't look like, I don't know what it look like. <laughs> That's this one. <sighs> and let's see, hook size. Now, I use a four millimeter hook on this one. That's what I'm using in the video. But you can use between a 3.75 millimeter to a 4.5 millimeter. You will still end up with a shawl that is, you know, approximately this big, 68 inches wide, um, 36 inches, you know, long. It will vary just by inches. So no big deal there. And your yardage that you need is going to be 900 yards of color A, 900 yards of color B. Again, that is including all overage that you may need. So 10% added in, that sort of thing. I round it up to the nearest like whole number. Now on this one, I actually used on mine, on this one right here, using that four millimeter hook, I ended up using 700 yards of each color. So between 700 to 900 yards gets you this baby right here. Now, I crochet tighter. It's not as tight as it could be. I know people will crochet tighter, but I do crochet pretty tight. So I crochet tighter. I ended up using less yarn. If you crochet looser, you're going to use more yarn. There's just no way around it. And if you change your yarn, your hook size, you're definitely going to use more yarn. So just keep those things in mind if you are having to order. I did this sample. I didn't want to keep crocheting in the same exact two colors for three weeks in a row. So I, um, <laughs> I did switch out my blue to a different blue. But you could do this if you just have like one skein of one color that you really like with your other colors. You can use it to do this section right here. I didn't use the full skein of yarn for of this color blue in this section so i did not go through that full skein so you could definitely this is like a one ball you only have one of that color you could use it in the second and part two of the shawl and you would be fine you can also use scraps you know i mean there's the possibilities are really endless now size four our last one We saw it in the beginning. We know I can't get it all in because it's so big. It's more of a cape. As you see, saw already, it's a cape. <laughs> and I love it. I'm keeping this one for myself. Now, the yarn on this one, or um, let's start with the hook size. I used a five millimeter hook. On this one, you can use anywhere from a five millimeter to a 5.5 millimeter on the size four yarn, worsted weight, Aran weight. So you need 1200 and 1200 for a total of 2400 yards for your colors. Now on my actual, this one right here, I actually used 1062. It was three full skeins of the yarn in each color. So it was 1,062 yards of color A, 1,062 of color B for the grand total of whatever that is. <laughs> 2,200 or something like that. 2,100, I don't know, whatever. But you get, you get it, you get it. <laughs> the gauge on this one was achieved 15 stitches, nine rows. Um, I did forget this, I'm sorry. 
gauge was achieved on the size three at 15 stitches and 16 rows. Now, on this one right here, we measure 84 inches, 84 inches at the top. We are 42 inches at the center point. So it's massive. It is bigger than my couch. <laughs> it's bigger than my big island. <laughs> it's yeah, everything. It's big. It's big. And it's great. So on mosaic, it makes a nice dense fabric. So, I mean, this is you people on the Arctic. <laughs> Places where it's not, you know, already 80 degrees in April. Y'all are going to love this. And last thing that I want to show you is the back side of the shawl. Back side ends up looking like this. There's from afar. We're getting up close. I'm going to bring it way up close so you can see it. You see that? See the ridges that you get? Especially during the second pattern, that's where you're really seeing those ridges. Some people call them pockets back there, whatever you want to call it. You can eliminate those with the anchor double crochet. There's also an anchored single crochet is what I would call it. Um, one of our lovely yarn friends from here, from this channel, she wrote it out and told me what to do. And she is okay with me sharing her technique that she developed with the anchored single crochet. But I've not had a chance to film that yet, so... I will link the Crochet Architects Anchor Double Crochet video down in the description if you do want to eliminate any of those gaps. It's how Mosaic Crochet is, and I don't mind it. I am going to warn you, though, when you do that, you will make a little bit more of a stiff fabric. This has a lot of movement in it and is drapey even at size 4 yarn because of this and the way that it looks back here. Once you anchor everything down, it'll just be more dense. I'm not saying it'll ruin it or anything, but it'll just be a little bit more stiff. And that'll probably change after you wash it for the first time. And it'll be, you know, no problem at all. So just keep that in mind, though. I want to warn. Now, you can use hook sizes that I recommend. You can go off of this and, you know, do whatever you want. Use whatever you want. But I have used all inexpensive yarns for the most part. Hopefully you are going to make a shawl that you really enjoy wearing or you're going to make one that you're going to give away and that person's going to enjoy it. But most of all, I really do appreciate your time for watching my videos. I know some of you are going to be so sick of hearing my voice by the end of this series. So by next week, <laughs> y'all be tired of me. I, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. It just, it takes a long time to teach this. So hopefully you will enjoy the videos. And if you do, please make sure you give me some feedback. Let me know. Hopefully it was worth it. So thank you so much for watching. Please carry on. Up here in this corner, I will have the little link. Let me put my face out of the corner. <laughs> I'll have the link to the next video. I'll put it on the screen too. I'll link it down below. As always, check my descriptions. There's information down there less on these videos because I've done this introduction video. But in the description, you will always find the hook I'm using, yarn I'm using, and that sort of thing. So please make sure you are checking those out. Do not feel bad. Like if you need to ask a question, definitely ask a question. But if I've already given that information and I know you're skipping the video, you know, that's like, okay, come on. <laughs> Check the description. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>